Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and today, Friday, we have come to an end of Armed Forces Week. Tomorrow is the official celebration of Armed Forces Day and as you're probably aware we've dedicated this whole week, all the videos this week, is being about Britain's Armed Forces. In particular Ian's been doing some videos, I've been doing some videos but we've been covering the Royal Navy, the Army and the Royal Air Force. So today is my last uh, video for Armed Forces Week and I've chosen the Royal Navy and in particular Nelson's Navy, very similar to the topic that Ian was talking about with the ship's biscuits and the diet but I've decided to look at the weapons used in boarding an enemy ship. So if you can imagine we could be at the Battle of Trafalgar with this uh, talk. Um, the ships have been sailing alongside the French ones for example and the gunners on board the ships have been pounding the enemy ships with both solid iron shot, uh, maybe chain shot uh, or, or even canister shot, all sorts of different types of shot and been raking the decks, uh, taking out the rigging, taking down the sails and at some point um, there will be a boarding of the enemy vessel. The idea is you don't want to do too much damage to the enemy ship because as I said with looking at Tudor warships you can recycle the ship so really you want to stop them, you want the crew to surrender the guns to stop firing and then that becomes a prize basically. So what would happen is uh, you've pounded the enemy ships for most of the battle and then a boarding party will be mustered together. This would usually consist of the ship's crew, uh, mainly because the Royal Marines on board the ship are really there to give covering fire as we would call it today so they could stand there on the decks or even up in the rigging and they can be raking the decks ready for the boarding party to uh, to advance over from uh, your ship onto the enemy ship um, but uh, you could also have Royal Marines taking part as well but generally speaking it's the job of the ship's crew so the first thing that would happen is after pounding the enemy ship uh, grappling irons like this one here would be thrown over to the enemy vessel and the ships will be drawn together so you can easily step from your ship onto the enemy ship. Now some of the crew that's going to do the boarding may be armed with one of these which is basically uh, our brown vest musket that you saw Ian do a video on recently. Uh, a musket that was in the British Army for a very very long time. The only difference is the ones that were used for naval service uh, usually had a browner barrel to protect it from rust and weather on board uh, and they were usually a lot shorter, a lot shorter than the ones used on the land. You'll also notice as well that the ramrods are usually wood and that's because metal ramrods with the sea air may rust into its small loops. So uh, very similar to what the infantry had but there are a few little differences there. And these would be fired in the same way. A cartridge box, the biting of the cartridge, powder in the pan, powder bullet wadding uh, or the paper cartridge I should say, ram down, full lock, pull the trigger, flint hits the steel, off it goes basically. It's interesting because you do also get bayonets for those muskets as well. However, the likelihood of you fixing a bayonet is pretty slim. It's more likely to be the weapon that you fire uh, and then you turn it around and club people with the other end. That was your typical use of a musket on board ship. Now, some of the ship's crew may also be armed with the sea service grenade. Believe it or not, they had them. Uh, and we have one just of here. Uh, made of iron, uh, hollow on the inside. And here we have a beach fuse. There's a hole at the top. And very simply, uh, using a piece of burning match cord, the same as what they're firing a lot of the guns with, even though a lot of flintlock now, but a lot of the guns on board are still being touch fired uh, with slow match in a linstock. Um, basically, this would be burning away as a fuse. You would light the beech wood uh, fuse and then throw it onto the enemy deck and it will roll onto the enemy deck and explode, sending bits of metal absolutely everywhere. More of a terrifying psychological weapon than anything. 
And then obviously you would leap across onto the enemy decks, maybe with your musket in hand, maybe with a handful of grenades or a satchel full of grenades. But then there was a mixture of weapons that could be used. This is my Royal Navy blunderbuss. So this is loaded the same way as any other musket really, but the wide opening at the end there allowed all sorts of things to be thrown in there and it was a scatter shot weapon. So when you pull the trigger, all sorts of rubbish flies out the end at point blank range. Very, very good at clearing a deck when you're trying to get on one. This is a sea service one uh, and this one actually has the ship's name stamped onto the barrel work just there. Um, other weapons included uh, pistols. These were usually issued from the sea chests that were on board the ship uh, and they were usually issued in pairs so you could have one in each hand firing them as you jump aboard and also turning them around and clubbing people with the other end which is what they were quite useful for especially in bad weather uh, these would be guaranteed to work as a club more than a firearm. Then we've also got what was known as the pike. Now some people mis uh, some people actually uh, label these incorrectly as a boarding pike. Uh, when you look at the ship's listings, they're actually down as a pike. That is all they are. Technically, they're not pikes at all because, as we know, pikes are something that's a good. Uh, 16 to 18 feet in length as used in the 17th century uh, so they had what was called uh, or what we would call today a half pike but as I said on board a ship they're actually known as pikes not boarding pikes and they are more a defensive weapon than anything so these will be used literally to stab at people when they're trying to jump on your ship really um, if you ever get a chance to go to places like HMS Victory uh, they were usually kept upright around the masts of the ship so you could literally grab one lift it off and fight with it very much like a spear really um, we do also have um, a sea service cutlass so this is the actual issued boarding cutlass so these are pretty heavy things and they have quite a long straight sharp blade this isn't in the best condition there's a bit of rust on this but at sea you would really struggle to keep these in pristine condition and this is nothing more than a butcher's cleaver it's used for hacking down at the enemy sailors and also being used to stab at them with the sharpened point at the end if you haven't got that another useful weapon that you may have to hand is even the boarding axe, which is this dual purpose weapon here. This can be used as a weapon for obvious reasons. You've got a very broad cutting edge at this end and a, uh, a beak or spike at the back there, very much like the medieval pole axes or, or uh, medieval uh, war hammers. Um, but this is also used to cut through rigging. If you've ever seen any scenes in paintings of uh, naval battles of the Napoleonic era, you will see that when you have cannonballs taking out sails in rigging, you often have on the decks of these ships all sorts of rubbish, very much like a barricade. So if you are going to board the enemy ship and you're jumping across with your uh, cutlass in your hand or even your brown bess or, or a blunderbuss or anything else like pistols, um, you may find it very difficult to get where you want to go. The enemy could be hiding or stood behind all their downed rigging. So this boarding axe is also useful for chopping through the tarred rope, chopping through the wooden beams or maybe chopping through uh, even bits of mass that's in the way and that will then enable you to move further on board the ship and then move through the decks and hopefully the enemy should surrender. In other words, nail their colours to the mass and uh, down their colours and uh, hopefully have the uh, officers of the ship, the captains and so on, handing their swords over to the British uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a fashion of surrender. Um, as well as having these official weapons as such, really, um, it was quite common for sailors to carry a knife anyway. So these could be 
uh, a very simple knife like this one, which is mainly used for general duties on board a ship. Most sailors will carry a knife. Most sailors still carry a knife today. And that's really down to the fact that knives are useful when you're dealing with rope. It's useful for cutting lengths of rope. It's also useful for prying open knots in rope. So knives were usually uh, carried at all times anyway. So if there is a problem, uh, and you've lost your cut list, that's dropped between the ships, your pistol no longer works, uh, your grenades are out for example, you will probably have one of these tucked into a belt that you can draw out and fight with as a, uh, a reserve weapon as such really. But it's interesting when you look at how battles were fought on board ships, um, it's really the guns on board the ships really, the cannons on board the ship, that's how all these naval battles start. And then eventually, uh, hopefully, you will get a successful boarding. Um, when an enemy ship is sighted, usually you will get the beat to quarters. That's usually where the Royal Marines on board the ship will start beating to say that the enemy have been sighted. That's when all the signal flags will go up. Uh, that's when you'll get all the orders being shouted out for the top men uh, to bring up the sails and so on to prevent damage to them. Uh, and then what would happen is all the decks will be cleared. The famous saying of clear the decks, really anything that was not needed was usually packed away. Uh, if you go on HMS Victory, for example, and you look at the captain's quarters where Nelson was, all the fine bone china, uh, all the bone china plates, all the beautiful things that officers would have, that would all have to be packed in straw in its boxes. And it was quite common to put those in the... Um, the boats in, in the small boats, rowboats, and, and put them over the side uh, for safekeeping during the battle. That sometimes happened to the animals as well, so you'd store them out the way. Uh, and then all the chests would be brought onto the deck, and they would be holding the muskets, uh, things like the cutlasses, the grenades, they would all be brought up. Uh, and obviously, everyone would be waiting then whilst the cannons are firing for that order's for a boarding party and then all you do is you grab your weapon of choice. Anyway, that's been a brief introduction to how you would board an enemy ship in Nelson's day. Maybe we could do one about uh, the Tudors and how they would board an enemy ship. But an interesting fact, Britain or the Royal Navy tended to fire at the enemy Whereas, for example, in the Spanish Civil War, uh, Spanish uh, Armada in 1588, it was quite common for the Spaniards to try and board. So the Royal Navy had a little different tactic uh, way back in the Tudor age. Anyway, on that note, have an enjoyable weekend. Remember, tomorrow is Armed Forces Day. It's also our 100th video. And by demand, we're giving that privilege, the 100th video, to Ian. So look out for Ian's video tomorrow, and I believe it's on an army theme. Anyway, on that note, speak to you soon, and uh, stay safe. Bye.